My name is Alex George and I'm an Ansible solution specialist. And I'm gonna be talking about how Ansible can be used to develop agnostic automation and dive into a little bit more about what that actually means. So what do I mean when I use the word agnostic? I mean, I want my automation to focus on having the ability to manage multiple operating systems, hypervisors, really independent of what the end user has to focus on. So each automation playbook or each job template will focus on an entire task rather than a task specific to an operating system. So I could have provisioning just for Azure or just for VMware, and I could have patching just for RHEL, just for Windows, but instead I wanna have a task level playbook. And then at the role itself, that's where I have it based on the actual operating system or hypervisor, branch off to do the appropriate tasks for that. Because obviously there are different modules for VMware versus Azure, RHEL versus Windows. I can integrate that entire process into what I'm working on. Really the advantage of this is now as an end user, I have one workflow or one job template to work on. So it's easier to integrate from ServiceNow, it's easier to integrate from an event-driven automation. It's really easier to integrate all kinds of different aspects. So now as an end user, I just have to go through a survey to pick exactly what I want rather than going through the process of finding the exact job to launch for the exact hypervisor for the exact OS. So as you start looking to this, how does it connect in different systems, that's where I can start looking at Ansible really being that core location and then just adding in. And this is great as you may only start with an on-premise environment, but later on you expand into the public cloud. This is actually how my automation started. Red Hat Virtualization was the only hypervisor that I had. Then I added in VMware and later I added in Azure. Started just with the Enterprise Linux and then eventually I added in, you know, RHEL 7, RHEL 8, and then Windows 2016. By having this platform agnostic and OS agnostic idea, it made it much easier to add in that next hypervisor, that next operating system, because all I had to really do is change the main tasks in my role, and then I was off and running. And then obviously add in, in that particular survey, the ability to select that operating system or that hypervisor. So it really made it much, much easier for me to add in without having to create an entirely new job template or an entirely new workflow for every single addition that I made in. Here's a simple workflow that could kind of highlight just how simple this could be to provision an operating system. So instead of provisioning Windows into VMware, it's now OS and hypervisor agnostic. Then it can deploy the application, configure whatever load balancer you happen to be leveraging, configure the firewall ports, check the applications running, and then you know send an email, send a Slack notification, and then free up the resource if not. So again, all of this is designed to be OS and platform agnostic so I can focus on really what tasks I want to do rather than what the individual platform or hypervisor requires. I'll handle that at the role level, which I'll show here in a second. So as you can see, I have a very basic playbook here that I can provide out to an end user that allows them to create a virtual machine. I've really hidden the rest of the process around the hypervisor and the operating system. I'll handle that at my level within the role itself. So if I go into this shadow man provision role, I've got my tasks and my main.yaml, and this is where I enable the capability to leverage different hypervisors. So this is just simply a variable that the end user can pass. In this case, I ask it via a survey that allows the end user in a single workflow or job template to provision in Rev, Azure, or VMware. So originally I just started with one hypervisor, and then as my environment grew and new teams and users came in and the demands grew, I was able to sw swap very easily and add in VMware, then add in Azure. So as I grow maybe into AWS in the future, I can just simply add in another task to handle provisioning in AWS. Because obviously there are different collections and modules for provisioning in Red Hat virtualization versus Azure versus whatever other hypervisor I may want. The same process applies to the operating system level where if I'm patching Linux or Windows, I can do that at the operating system level and have you know leverage yum versus win updates versus whatever the appropriate package manager is. So this gives me a lot of flexibility when I look into how do I manage different operating systems. So from the end user aspect, this is where I can start tying all these different pieces together. So obviously I showed the provisioning, I showed the patching capability, but maybe I wanna tie that together into a larger workflow. So I've actually created a workflow called multi-hypervisor, create and config, deploy web app with some failure paths. And for me, I'm leveraging Citrix, but I could have made that platform agnostic as well. 
So in this case, I do have a survey built out and this is where I can control what access that end user gets. So I can actually have them pick the operating system, which I've set up where they can pick, in my case, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7, 8, or Windows 2016. And the same thing from the hypervisor side of things. Again, I've made it very easy where it's now a drop down where they can pick Rev, VMware, or Azure. So it's very easy to modify this, add in a new operating system, add in a new hypervisor, and provide that out to my end user. And then really the job templates and workflows handle the rest of that process. So I have a large workflow that really goes through the full process of, in my case, connecting the service now, provisioning out that VM in a platform agnostic way, syncing that inventory in whatever the hypervisor is, doing my configuration, registering, making sure the repositories are set, connecting to IDM or Active Directory. I've got some additional approvals in, some platform agnostic web application installation, so Nginx or Apache or IIS if I'm on Windows, then some load balancing, and then again, providing out information to that end user. So obviously from the hypervisor side of things, you know, I basically have a single job template. So there's that provision VM multi-platform. I've got the credentials stored in here for each of the different hypervisors. So whether it's Azure, Red Hat Virtualization or VMware, I could very easily add in the capability to have AWS. So a single job to manage this process. And then also as I look into that web application, I have two different credentials in here for that as well. So handling both Linux as well as Windows. This comes up a lot with obviously since Linux and Windows are different. So SSH versus WinRM. I'm only allowed to have one credential of a credential type per job template. So that's why I have one of that machine credential type for Linux and then I have one for Windows. So what I had to do was I created a custom credential type called Windows Kerberos, which just asks basically the user, the transport method, so NTLM, Kerberos, Cred SSP, and then the password. And then I set those as extra variables. So I've got Windows user, Windows password, or Windows transport. And then I have that set either at the group or host level inside my inventory. So I've got a host, uh, I've got my Shadowman production environment, which this side can manage the fact that I have three different hypervisors. And if you notice, I have set in here, I define several variables in here, including what that hypervisor is. So this helps when I deprovision a host, I don't need the end user to know where it was provisioned initially. I can just find it as part of that. And then this is also where I set those connection parameters. So WinRM, the Ansible port and all that, if I'm leveraging a Windows server. So as part of this, I can very easily see out of the box anytime I bring in a new server that it will automatically configure that information. So here's a Windows server that I have running on Windows 2016. And it does have that setup where it's got that variable for the become password for user for the connection. So all of this is now predefined. Anytime I add a new server, it automatically adds in these variables and that Windows password will use this custom credential that I've created. So I can very easily manage Linux and Windows environments from a single job. And as I mentioned, because I have this single multi-hypervisor capability here, as far as the end user is concerned, I can have a single service catalog for them to do their provisioning processes, perform their patching, however much capability you want to give them. So I do have, obviously I've got these old jobs where I can pick the specific hypervisor, but for a better end user experience, I can set this up where it's a single job where I can do provisioning and deprovisioning. And then all they have to do is pick the information they want. So again, I can pick that operating system. I can pick that hypervisor. Maybe I have to also pick the amount of RAM, the number of CPUs, all of that. And now it's a single entry point for the end user, and then they can be off and running. So this can streamline a lot of your operations to the end user and also make it easier. Now I don't have to create a new job template or workflow for every new operating system or hypervisor, which now means anytime I want to integrate into something like ServiceNow or an event-driven solution, I don't have to create an entirely new catalog for it. I can just update in this case at a another multiple choice selection for here, add another multiple choice selection for here, and I'm off and running. So it makes it much easier to manage some of these pieces as I look to grow my environment. So where can I go from here? I'll be the first to admit I did not start off making everything platform agnostic. Everything that I started with was hypervisor and OS specific. As I started to grow and more users got involved, that's when I started to shift my mentality. And that's the beauty of roles as you start building these things out, it makes it much, much easier to combine. I already had the role for patching. I already had the role for provisioning in Azure. It was very easy to combine those into a single agnostic role once that was already built out. 
So I encourage you to obviously get comfortable, come up with the exact solution that you need for your environments, and then start looking into, can I get this into a mixed environment? So there's a blog around automating in a mixed environment and also a nice video that kind of walks through a way to have an agnostic service management. So, hey, I want to restart a web service. Obviously, it's a different service on Linux versus Windows, but I can handle that leveraging the operating system and setting some facts. So obviously, there's a lot I can do, but this hopefully gives you an idea of where you can get started in getting to a platform agnostic type concept. So hopefully this is helpful as you start looking to some more advanced automation concepts as you look into mixed environments, because as we all understand, it's never as simple as one operating system and one hypervisor. We have complex environments in many different locations. So sometimes it's easier to start streamline and tying some of these pieces together. Thank you.